Increasing metabolic flexibility comes with numerous benefits for your health, like fat loss, better metabolic markers, and sharper cognition. Many who tend to overeat carbohydrates have experienced the tiredness, fatigue, and energy crash associated with it. Short term that's fine, as the body needs a quick source of fuel to power your thinking, your movement, and your physiology. However, overeating carbohydrates long term without a sufficient amount of physical activity backing it up can lead to numerous issues. It's a loop of fatigue, weight gain, and low energy. Not to mention all the associated diseases that develop due to this like uh, the metabolic dysfunction type which are diabetes, obesity and numerous cardiovascular diseases. So today's goal is to present a few ways to become more metabolically flexible. To understand metabolic flexibility, the science and benefits behind it. And learn a few practical tips to improve it. Metabolic flexibility is about learning to switch the source of fuel from glucose to fats. The mitochondria plays a massive role in how this functions and how efficient we are in creating energy. This is important because of the obesity epidemic we have. Metabolically inflexible people aren't as efficient at burning fat so they need constant refuel of glucose to power their energy. This causes rapid spikes and drops in blood glucose level, getting your blood glucose on a roller coaster, which means poor glycemic control. This further deteriorates metabolic health and lowers energy. On the other hand, learning to switch to fats for fuel makes us leaner, sharper cognitively, and more energetic. Metabolic flexibility is not a yes or a no. It's a spectrum. Being more flexible means you can switch the fats faster, thus burning fat quicker. A few practical dietary strategies can help you gain metabolic flexibility, which consequentially makes you feel better, think sharper, and be more energetic. Sometimes it's as simple as skipping breakfast, adding MCT oil to your coffee, or an avocado to your lunch. Before we dive any further, let's check out the proposed benefits of becoming more metabolically flexible. Stable energy levels, greater insulin sensitivity, faster and more efficient fat loss, greater mitochondria function, more optimal lipid profile and cholesterol profile, lower rate of inflammation and oxidative stress and damage, slower rate of aging, lower risk of metabolic dysfunction and metabolic syndrome, and better cognitive performance and neuroprotection. But how and why does metabolic flexibility work? The same philosophy as with ketosis applies, because metabolic flexibility is about stimulating partial ketosis. During glucose starvation, once there is no glucose to use for energy, the liver starts breaking down fatty acids into ketones to fuel our energy. This tapping into fats is the so-called hitting the metabolic switch. Once the metabolic switch is activated, we hit the reset button on our metabolism. The body starts breaking down fat, spares lean muscle and insulin sensitivity is improved. But how to hit the metabolic switch? Well, you've probably heard of the keto diet, but this isn't just about eating ketogenic. For many people, keto can be an extreme diet. I myself couldn't sustain it for longer than 2-3 to three months. It's more about contextually understanding the use of glucose, how your training or your coffee or other factors like sleep affect your glucose level and your fat burning ability. And being metabolically flexible the way I do it is with fasting, low to mid carb diet and I feel way better, cognitively sharper, faster, mentally clear and I also have more energy. This isn't about one simple strategy but it's about understanding the concept and context behind metabolic flexibility, when to stop when you're feeling like you're overeating sugars and you're constantly fatigued, when you might want to take a break and fast a bit or introduce more healthy fats to your plate and avoid some of the simple carbohydrates and other dietary strategies. Before we dive deeper, I just want you to seek this. Let's compare how blood glucose moves in two extremes. Number one, we have the average Joe eating four times a day. This is what his blood glucose levels do. Sharp spikes and drops, a lot of refueling needed. Number two, we have a metabolically flexible biohacker that's fasting, eating low or mid-carb and high-fat diet. 
he eats twice daily, blood glucose levels are stable, he has long-lasting energy and no severe crashes. The second one is a much healthier place to be at, you don't want your blood glucose on a roller coaster. Quick one. If there's one thing I've learned from four years of active research is that energy is key for health. Fatigue is the early sign of physiological dysfunction in the body which degrades life. Greater energy levels translate to greater vitality, health and optimal performance. We've packed all this research into a digital product called Energy Elevation. We showcase the 11 strategies to increase your energy levels, from things like fasting and resistance training to HIT cardio and electrolytes, we cover a lot of practical tips. The goal is to carve an efficient path for greater vitality, well-being and longevity. If you're eager to join this mission, check the link in the description and join the waitlist. It's a digital set of an ebook, video collection and a habit tracker. We're planning to launch in Q4, so those who join the waitlist get 20% off 10 days post-launch. Let's get it. Eating low-carb, high-fat or even a ketogenic diet is one of the best, fastest way to improve metabolic flexibility. This is primarily because your body learns how to use fats for fuel and instead isn't so reliant upon glucose anymore. It isn't about completely ditching carbs and just living off of fats. No, it's about understanding and feeling the context of it. So in a way, it's about carb cycling. Whenever you feel like you've over ate your carbs, depending on, of course, how much you train and how much of a cognitive boost you needed that day, you get to cycle your carbs and tend to have some periods of lower carb consumption and higher carb consumption. Essentially, train your metabolism to hit the switch between fats and glucose. For many, small changes like extending your fasting window or reducing the amount of carbs and putting some healthy fats on your plate, like switching that rice and pasta for some extra avocado and beef, do the trick. Next one is fasting. Intermittent fasting is one of the most practical ways of hitting the metabolic switch, if you will. Basically, by extending the non-eating or non-glucose eating window, your body is able to tap into fat for fuel. This hits the reset button on your sugar metabolism. As insulin sensitivity gets better, your pancreas takes a rest and it's almost as if you were doing a micro detox every day, just by skipping breakfast. I currently do the 16 to 8 model, which for me just means skipping breakfast and I feel way better. Uh, my fat percentage dropped down, I feel mentally more clear and sharp and I tend to notice I have more energy. Just as ketosis, it works on the same mechanism, no glucose ingestion for an extended period of time, speeds up the breakdown of fatty acids and hits the metabolic switch. Another biohack you've probably heard of is MCT oil. Adding MCT or medium chain triglycerides in your coffee can speed up weight loss as it helps your body shift into ketosis faster. It's quite effective in making you burn fat faster if carbs aren't present, of course. Caffeine also speeds up metabolism acutely, so combined with MCT it could have those fasting and keto mimicking effects. If you're doing MCT oil, try the lowest possible dose of about one third or two thirds of a teaspoon because it tends to be hard on the stomach. Then it's training and training intensity. So the harder you work out in the gym, the more glucose you're going to need to replenish glycogen in the muscle. So for an athlete or someone who trains about five weeks weekly intensely, their diet can look much differently and they can still maintain a good level of metabolic flexibility. This is because they have higher degree of muscle mass and they tend to use the glucose and glycogen they have to power their activities. So for example, after a heavy muscle building workout, you can eat more glucose and glucose is going to raise less in the blood because the muscle is going to suck up all of that in to replenish glycogen reserves. So contextually understand that those who are going to exercise more intensely and build muscle or run at a faster pace are going to need more glucose and are still going to maintain pretty good levels of metabolic flexibility. So intense HIIT training or resistance training which builds muscle is going to make you more metabolically flexible. Then we go on to exogenous ketones. 
A lot of influential people in the biohacking sphere, like Ben Grimfield and Tim Ferriss and Dave Asprey, have mentioned the use of exogenous ketones. Why? Exogenous ketones work just as MCT oil. In fact, they are uh, increasing the speed of that transition into ketosis. So in a glucose deprived state where you haven't eaten any carbs, MCT or exogenous ketones are going to help you get to that ketosis level way faster. It's just smoothing out that transition, making your cognitive engines run faster and enhancing fat loss. Then we have glucose tracking. Well, the objective way to know whether you're in ketosis is tracking your ketone levels. Another strategy for determining where you are in terms of your blood glucose level, which tells you a lot about metabolic flexibility, is measuring your glucose levels by using a glucose tracker. Using a glucose tracking device helps you see those little fluctuations that happen right after you eat certain kinds of foods and they help you distinguish certain patterns and differences. For example, you eat an avocado and your blood glucose stays almost the same and very stable and you eat a pack of three donuts and your blood glucose spikes up. This helps you notice specific patterns in your blood glucose fluctuations based on what you ate, how you slept, how you trained, providing you with the data so you can make the best conscious choice for yourself to maintain stable blood glucose levels. Bullet points. Metabolic flexibility is about teaching your body how to tap into fats for fuel faster. It comes with numerous benefits like improved cognitive function, improved heart health, faster fat loss and more energy. Our top dietary strategies that can help you get there is fasting, keto or low carb high fat diets help improve metabolic flexibility. Things like exogenous ketones and MCT oil and caffeine can help you shift to ketosis faster. Last thing is intense training by default makes you use more carbs and suck up more glucose, so it improves MF. And glucose tracking can help you determine glucose fluctuations based on different things you do, like training, eating specific foods, fats versus carbs, drinking alcohol, poor versus good sleep, etc. Done filming for today. Can't wait to get to my first cup of coffee. Bye.